Welcome to Rona's Academy, where all complications in all business related courses are made comprehensible via online means, where we establish the concepts and the principles that will aid you in passing all exams with our ease. So subscribe and become part of the learning family where we learn together and explore Rona's comprehending the complications. IES 16 requires that we measure an item of property, plant and equipment initially at cost. And the cost include the purchase price and all other costs that are directly attributed to the acquisition and construction of the item of PP. We also have to capitalize or capture this monthly cost if there is any. Then if an entity undertake loan or takes loan to finance the acquisition or construction of that particular item of PP, the interest that the entity will pay on the loan should be capitalized as part of the cost of the asset. And this principle has been enshrined or has a, a, a standard device for it, which is the IEX 23, that is the borrowing cost. So the principle of capitalizing or capturing the interest on the loan as part of the cost of the asset, that concept or principle is known as borrowing cost. And that is what we are going to look at in this lesson. So, IES 23, borrowing cost. Now, the borrowing cost or the process of recognizing borrowing cost as part of the cost of an asset is known as capitalizing. The process of capitalizing or sorry the price of recognizing a borrowing cost as part of the cost of an asset is known as capitalizing now one who asks what is borrowing cost when we say borrowing cost what do we mean so remember that anytime you take an accounting standard you pass it through the normal process look at the definition the scope recognition when should we measure it and the initial and the subsequent measurement, then when should you recognize it from your books? So definition of borrowing cost simply means interest or other cost that an entity will incur in relation to borrowing of funds. So any interest or other cost an entity will incur in borrowing of funds is known as borrowing cost. An example of borrowing cost includes the interest on bank overdraft and other borrowing so interest on back overdraft and other borrowings are example one of the example of what borrowing cost we also have finance so two so the first one is interest interest on bank overdraft and other borrowings and then we also have finance Select finance costs. So finance costs that is charged on uh, leases, finance leases or leases. So the interest or the finance cost that an entity will pay on the leasing of an item or a property or an asset, that finance cost is also known as what an example of a borrowing cost. The third one is exchange differences. Exchange differences. Exchange differences that arise as a result of foreign uh, foreign currency borrowings. Okay, so exchange differences that are arising as a result of foreign currency borrowings to the extent that they are regarded as adjustment on the interest cost. So these are the three examples of borrowing costs. Borrowing cost. Or what cost? should we capitalize as part of the cost of the asset? We know that 
you will capitalize the interest on the borrowings. Is it all the interest that we are going to capitalize as cost of the assets? We also know that is it all the finance costs that we have in care that we are going to capitalize as part of the cost of the assets? The answer is obviously no. So we only capitalize borrowing costs that are directly related to production, construction, or acquisition of a qualifying asset. Of a qualifying asset. Of a qualifying asset. So remember that only borrowing costs that are directly related to the production, construction, and acquisition of a qualifying asset. That will be captured as cost of the assets, or that will be captured or capitalized as part of the cost of the assets in question. So when we ask, what are qualifying assets? Qualifying assets are assets that will take a substantial period of time before they are and they get ready for their intended use or sale. So qualifying assets, they are the assets that substantially take a longer period of time before they get ready for their intended use or for sale or their for intended what sale. Now, what are examples of qualifying assets? When we say qualifying assets, then we are looking at PP and investment properties. investment properties at their development stage or during their developmental stage so pp and investment property the second one is intangible assets at their development during their developmental stage so intangible assets intangible assets during their developmental stage so the third example of a qualified asset is made to other inventories made to order inventories or inventories that take substantially a longer period for them to bring or the longer period for them to be brought to their sellable condition so this is made to other inventories or inventory that will take a longer period for the entity to bring them to their sellable conditions. They also fall under the qualifying assets. So basically, when we say qualifying assets, we are saying that assets that take substantial period of time for them to get ready for their intended use or sale. An example will be a property plant and equipment and investment properties at their developmental stage. We can also look at uh, intangible assets at their developmental stage we can also look at made to order inventories, made to order inventories, or the inventories that will take substantial period for the entity to bring them to their sellable condition also falls under qualifying assets. Okay, now knowing what borrowing cost is and knowing the types of borrowing cost as well as what qualifying assets are, then when should an entity start capitalizing borrowing cost? An entity should start capitalizing borrowing costs when the following three conditions are met. So the standard has provided or has outlined three conditions that until they are met, an entity cannot start capitalizing borrowing costs. The first one is that when the expenditure on the assets is being incurred, so the expenditure on the construction, on the acquisition or production of the assets is being incurred. So the first one has to do with expenditure. is being incurred. And then the second one is when the borrowing cost is being incurred. So when the borrowing cost is being incurred. So the third recognition is that the activities that are necessary to get the asset into its intended word use are being what incurred so what activities so here will be the other activities that will help the assets to get into its intended use has started to be incurred then if these all these three conditions 
at present, then we say that an entity can start capitalization of a borrowing cost. Remember that these activities are broad in nature. It can be when they are undertaking legal permission for the site or they are clearing or drawing the plans or form and out the activities. So once these are incurred, these three, all these three conditions are present, then the entity can start capitalizing. Now, when should the entity cease capitalization of a borrowing cost? In other words, when should the entity stop capitalizing borrowing costs on that specific asset? When all the activities that are substantially necessary for the construction or production of the asset is completed, then the entity should cease capitalization. What it simply means is that when the asset is ready for its intended use, then we, should, we say that the entity should stop capitalizing borrowing costs. Now, there are some times where during the production of that particular asset, there will be interruption of work. So during that period that there will be an interruption, an active development will be interrupted, then we say that borrowing costs should be suspended for that period. For instance, if we are constructing an asset maybe from January 2019 to December 2019, and maybe in August, there was an interruption in the active development of the asset, then we say that particular month of August should be excluded. We shouldn't, you know, capitalize borrowing costs in that particular month, or but all borrowing costs that are capitalized in that month should be expended directly in your P or L account. From all this perspective, we can see that any borrowing costs that are not directly attributed to the construction, acquisition, or production of a qualifying asset must be expensed in our P or L account. That is the assumption, or that is what we are supposed to do. Now, we have sometimes entity will go in for loans specifically for financing of an asset. Sometimes too, they go in for general loans. That will not be made up of just one loan, but it will be made up of more than one loans in financing their item of property, plant and equipment, or any form of asset. That is of qualifying in nature. How, what cost should you capitalize under these two assumptions? So we are looking at specific loans. Now, when we talk about specific loans, the cost that you capitalize as part of the cost of the assets will be the interest on the loan. So, assuming you went for 10,000 loans and then the interest is 10%, then the interest that you capitalize will be $1,000. So, assuming it's 10,000 is the cost, the interest that you capitalize will be $10,000. Next, any investment income so sometimes business will go for this loan for the production of an asset but because commencement or they have not started the production of the asset they will invest that particular loan into any form of investment any form of investment portfolio if that's the case any interest that you will gain on that temporary investment should be deducted from the borrowing cost before the rest will be treated or capitalized as part of the cost of the asset. In this case, assuming that the business invested this $10,000 and had an investment income of 200, then the amount to be capitalized as part of the cost of the asset will be 800, which will be the net of the thousand that we have. So remember that anytime the business undertakes specific loans to finance a qualifying asset, then the cost or the borrowing cost to capitalize will be the interest on the loan. The interest on the loan less any investment income, any temporal investment income gain on that specific loan. That is about specific loans. Now, if the entity undertake loans, several loans, to finance a particular project. Let's say the entity is taking a bank loan from one side 
and then the debenture from the other side. Then we cannot use the first assumption because here we are getting two loans. So this principle or this concept is known as the general loans. The general loans. Now with the general loans, the interest or the interest rate that you will use in computing for your borrowing costs will be the weighted average but the weighted average borrowing cost rate or in other words the weighted average rate or the, uh, the borrowing cost rate how do we get that it is the summation of the several interest divided by the total loan multiplied by 100 will give us the borrowing cost rate so we use the capitalization rate when it comes to what the general loans capitalization rate and i'm saying that assuming we are taking ten thousand dollars with six percent interest and then we are taking five thousand dollars these are different loans from which is uh, five percent let's say ten percent interest then if you want to get a capitalization rate it's going to be the interest that you get here so it's going to be the ten thousand multiplied by the six percent by the six percent plus the five thousand multiply by the ten percent the ten percent all divided by the total loan which will be fifteen thousand dollars in this case so whatever we get here multiply by hundred whatever we get here will be the capitalization rate remember that the capitalization rate will be computed or will be calculated on the expenses that we have incurred on the assets not on the loans but the expenses that we have incurred on the assets so this is about a brief summary about uh, you know ias 23 borrowing costs so in a subsequent video we will solve a full practical question and you see how to establish the differences between the specific loans and then the general loans and how to account for them thank you